The Allies of Humanity, Book 2, by Marshall Vian Summers. Fifth Briefing, What They Want. As we have said, those who are intervening in your world today want to gain control of this world for obvious reasons, and for reasons that are not so obvious. They see this world as a great prize, rich in resources, governed by a race that they believe is unruly and unworthy to be the stewards of such a wondrous place. They also value your world, as we have said, because of its strategic importance and because of the hidden depositories that exist in many parts of the world. But this does not fully answer the question as to what the visitors really want. Here we must open another door into the darker side of the intervention and, in doing so, reveal more to you the nature of commerce as it exists in this part of the galaxy. As we have said, the intervention is primarily a set of commercial forces, not military forces. They view your world for its prospects, for its resources, for its strategic importance, and for its hidden treasures. But what you must understand at this point is that they also value you. As we have emphasized throughout our briefings, they need human assistance to establish themselves in your world. They need the human infrastructure. They need human government and religion. They need your assistance to establish their operations here fully and reliably. And they will provide you a semblance of your former life in order to maintain human order and allegiance to the best of their ability. In order to accomplish and to maintain this, however, they will have to establish a very deep network of deception that we have been describing all along. Here you must understand that they regard you as a resource as well. They do not consider you to be their equals. They do not value your religions, your cultures, or your customs. They see you primarily as one of the resources of the world. As such, they seek to take advantage of you in all the ways that they can, that they deem to be profitable and valuable to their interests. To them, you are a potential asset. As an asset, you are valued only in what you are worth to them, how you may assist them, and what you may be worth as an entity and as a resource in and of yourself. You must stop to consider what this really means. It means that they consider you to be a biological resource, part of a network of resources that exists within this world. In this, they view you much the same way that you view domesticated animals that you use as a resource. You use these animals for a variety of reasons, we understand. And this is common in the greater community, in worlds where such animals can be used as a food resource. We understand that you use your animals in many different ways to provide many different kinds of benefits and substances and so forth. This is how you appear to those who are visiting your world, to the intervention. They do not consider you their equal. They consider you their resource. What you may not understand is that each year thousands of people are taken and not returned to the world. These people are not simply conditioned. They are kept. Some of them perish in captivity. Some of them do not survive the process of their capturing. Some become sick and die. Those that cannot survive and are still seen as useful to the intervention are used as a biological resource. That means that their blood, their body parts, everything is used according to its value in the greater community. In the greater community, Biological resources such as blood, plasma, DNA, bone marrow, skin, and body organs can be used for their chemical substances.
From these, medicines are made. From these, new life forms are bred. These substances are valuable commodities in certain parts of the greater community. If they do not survive, those who are captured and not returned will be used for other purposes. Should the intervention gain complete control of your world, many people who are considered to be undesirable or who do not fit into the social patterns established through the intervention will be used as biological resources in this way. Perhaps this is shocking, but you can understand this, for this is how you treat your animals as biological resources, to be used for food, for clothing, for medicines, for fuel. In the greater community, biological resources are very valuable because they can be used and altered for a variety of purposes, as we have mentioned, for medicinal purposes, for life support purposes, and for the breeding and generation of new species. This is why many of your animals are taken. They are not simply taken to provide blood products for the interbreeding program. They are taken because these products themselves are highly valuable and can be traded very successfully. In technological societies, such as the collectives, biological resources are extremely valuable and difficult to find in the greater community. As we have said repeatedly, your world is viewed as a biological storehouse. So while the visitors want the mineral resources of your world, they also want things that are much more elemental to the needs of life. They need water. They need oxygen. They need blood. They need the resistance factors in blood. They need plasma. They need the biological elements that constitute life and that are fundamental to life everywhere. This means that they need you as a biological resource. It is one thing to consider that your world will be used to serve other powers. But the idea that you will be used to serve other powers is another matter altogether and represents a further violation of your fundamental rights. This, of course, is entirely hidden from their public agenda. Those that they persuade to become their adherents and their representatives will never be told these things. Part of their pacification program is to assure you that they are here for your good and for your redemption and for the preservation of the world. But as we have so often said, it is the preservation of the world for their needs. The plants, the animals, the breathable atmosphere, the water, are all resources to be used and are valuable in and of themselves, as well as the mineral wealth that exists in this world. But the missing part in all this is your role as a biological resource. This is how the intervention views you as a resource. This, of course, would never be revealed to those who are being pacified or to those who even today may stand as representatives and apologists for the intervention. But this is so very true. You may wonder, where have all the people gone who have been taken and not returned? You may ask this. Did they all run away? Some indeed were the victims of human violence. Some indeed have run away. But we are talking about many people worldwide who have disappeared without a trace, without a clue. We know this from studying the transmissions of your governments. We know this from what the Unseen Ones have told us. And we know this because this is evident in the collective's intrusions in other worlds. Somehow, mysteriously, individuals begin to disappear at the early stages of these interventions. And people who recognize this will think it is due to the normal but unfortunate circumstances within their own cultures. It will be explained in these terms. Here, you must think of your well-being and the well-being of your family, your children, your friends, and your acquaintances, most assuredly. 
and beyond this, you must consider the well-being of your whole world and the security of human life. As a resource, you will be used, and when your usefulness is over, you will be discarded. This is how resources are used. Some are preserved, some are used up. Just the way that you use resources in your daily life. What you think of as the human soul, the spirit of humanity, is not valued by the intervention. This violation is so complete and so thorough and is occurring already in all of its manifestations. Look into this matter and think for yourself, and you shall see for yourself. We are giving you the perspective of looking from the outside in. This gives you an objective view of the circumstances of your world and the forces that are acting upon it. As we mentioned in our first set of discourses, should the intervention take full hold and an occupation be established here completely, then the human population will be reduced into an efficient working class. How will this be accomplished without producing outrage and revolution among the human population? It will be accomplished through the disappearance of people. It will be accomplished by the isolation of those who are considered to be uncooperative or dissenting. They will be taken away to be seen no more. And while there will be the appearance of normalcy in human affairs, behind the scene, everything will be changed and will be managed by a different set of powers. It is hoped by the collectives that this can be accomplished for as long as possible and that a revolution will not begin, for that would be very costly to their endeavors and very costly to humanity as well. The visitors are here to do business. You are part of the business. Your hands, your eyes, your reproductive organs, your blood, your plasma, your biochemistry. This is all part of their business. To them, you are like intelligent livestock, useful, interesting, and commercially important. At the outset, they will treat you with deference, those of you who may encounter them face to face, but they will give you no power. They will not give you a choice. They will only try to convince you of the wisdom of their ways and the necessity of their presence in the world. And should you decline or should you resist, they will make life difficult for you or they will discard you for later use. Some of those, we understand, who have not returned to the world were those who fought against them and were eliminated as a result. How do we know these things? We know them because we understand the collectives. We understand their legal commerce. And we understand their illegal commerce. They want to use every part of the world and they want to use every part of you just like you would want to use every part of the cow or the sheep or any other domesticated animal that you breed for your own purposes. How do we know that they are doing these things in the world? We know because we are monitoring their communications. Otherwise, we could not fully observe their activities and understand the nature of their involvement here. It is remarkably similar to their involvement in other emerging worlds, and what we cannot see, the Unseen Ones have revealed to us. We know from their transmissions, their communications with their satellites within the world and their bases beyond the world, that many of their specimens, as they refer to you, have either perished or had to be used for other reasons. However, we know from their Earth transmissions that many people are disappearing, so it is not difficult for us to see the connection. In their attempt to breed a new leadership for humanity, a hybridized person, they need all of these biological resources that we are describing. What we are speaking of here is the most hidden and secret part of their agenda, 
the part that they will never reveal to you willingly, the part that you may never see without great assistance. This is the most secret of their activities. They sell biological products on what you would call a black market in the universe. But the value of these products and the demand for them is indeed significant. In most places where commerce has been established, such as in your vicinity, such trade is illegal, for it is considered to be morally and ethically reprehensible. But with so many technological societies existing in the universe and biological resources such as exist in your world being as rare as they are, the demand for these fundamental elements is considerable. Many technologically advancing nations have outstripped their own world's biological resources to the extent that they must find them elsewhere, and they must trade and barter for them as one of their primary endeavors. This is not simply food products, minerals, and metals, and elements such as this. It is also the need for biological products, as we have described, which are abundant in your world, and which are abundant within the human family. So when someone asks, what do they want? The appropriate answer is, they want your world and its resources, and they want you and your resources. As we have said, this is the most hidden of their agendas, but it is necessary for you to know because this makes the violation complete. The visitors do not hate humanity. They are not cruel and murderous in the sense that you might think. They just view you as a resource the way you view your animals as a resource. To them, though you have intelligence, they consider that you are irredeemably chaotic and unruly, and they do not understand your deeper motivations. They see your technology as being in a rather adolescent phase, and they look at your destructive behaviors with concern, anxiety, and repulsion. Being without knowledge, the spiritual foundation, they do not see that what they are perpetrating upon your world is ethically or morally reprehensible. It is merely an opportunity to fulfill their practical necessities. As we have said, they seek to bring humanity into their collective, but this is only a very select part of your population. And here you would not be at the upper levels of their hierarchy. For all the other people in the world, what will happen to them if the intervention is complete, if the occupation can be established completely? We have been reluctant to tell you certain things because we do not want to lose your attention. We do not want you to turn away in denial, thinking that you cannot face these matters. So we have tried to be extremely careful in the way that we have presented the situation. But in spite of this, there are certain things you must know and that you cannot readily see from your vantage point. We had to learn these realities ourselves, though we had assistance such as we are providing for you. But the reprehensible nature of the collectives and their lack of morality and ethics was something we have had to face. That is why we avoid the collectives in our own worlds, where they cannot penetrate. There are many nations in the universe that have created alliances to protect themselves from collectives such as these, particularly in well-inhabited areas of the galaxy. This is why the collectives are governed by trade unions and regional governing powers and authorities. They are held in check by many other forces who do not want to fall under their persuasion or their control. Even many of their trading partners look at them with anxiety. And even if they are forced to engage in commerce with collectives, they must protect themselves from the collective's influence itself. Resources are precious in the universe. 
mineral resources, water resources, biological resources, food resources. Large technological societies, such as the collectives, have an enormous need for resources for their own maintenance. Their commerce is based upon the acquisition of all these things and on the exploration for new sources. This, of course, makes them primarily interested in new mineral discoveries and in emerging worlds such as your own, who are emerging in their midst within regions where they have influence and power. Consider our words. Now we must tell you what you must do.